in, in your book, you discuss the long time ago illusion, which I think um, many of the many of us are, are quite guilty of, perhaps, of, of saying they'll look at you know some historical event and say, well, that was a long time ago, or you know they look at a you know a sports team that you know like like before like the Washington Redskins and say, well, why would we change the name of that? It's like who cares? Like you know that it, it, things were different then. That was so long ago. Um, can you speak to what this is and, and how can we overcome it? Yeah. Well, you know, it's really interesting. I was doing some um, reading on the research on time perception, like how we look at things in the past and the future and kind of mentally time travel. It's really interesting. We, we, we tend to look at the past blurrier, literally blurrier than the future. Um, in other words, like if something was a year ago in the past, it feels like a long time ago in a different way than the future, a year in the future. Um, we also, research shows, tend to blame victims in the past more than we do in the future. I mean, if you tell someone something bad's going to happen to somebody a year from now, we don't blame them as much as we tell someone something bad happened to someone a year ago. We, oh, they maybe they did something to kind of make that happen. Um, so there's these weird time perception illusions that are working against us seeing our his, our history accurately. On top of it all, the long time ago illusion is a uh, is one in which that blurriness leads us to to have. Let me give an example, a very concrete example. I recently learned that Anne Frank. And Martin Luther King, if they were alive today, would be the same age as Barbara Walters. Like, what? The host of The View? The former host of The View? What? I mean, I think of the Holocaust as being so long ago. I think of the Civil Rights Movement as being so long ago. But in fact, they're very much in Barbara Walters' lifetime. Um, and that blurriness we have on the past makes it hard for us to connect the dots between what happened then and what's happening now. And it's uh, it, it, it's interesting that you also talk about like the the you know Bob Marley and kind of the Marley hypothesis uh, around just just even the idea of let's say ignorance of racism in the past and leads to denial of racism in the present, which is you know which is really another case for really having a better understanding of our history. Yeah, the Marley hypothesis, uh, psychologist Fia Salter and her colleagues uh, came up with that. In fact, when I first read about it, I was like, oh, I'm one of the scholars, last name must be Marley, Marley hypothesis. But in fact, they named it after Bob Marley um, and his song, Buffalo Soldier, when he talks about the dangers of not knowing our history. And their studies show exactly that, that, uh, well, actually, it was sort of a, 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 a kind of encouraging finding, which is giving people just a little bit of history historical knowledge, just like a couple of paragraphs, actually increase their ability to recognize systemic racism in the present. So that connecting of the dots between a long time ago and now really pays off in our ability, again, to see the present and understand it and not just be baffled by why is everything so messed up. <laughs> 